winner of the 1988 Pulitzer Prize, Driving Miss Daisy is a warm-hearted masterpiece that has been delighting audiences for 25 years. From 1948 to 1973, Daisy, a wealthy Jewish Southerner, employs Hoke, a soft-spoken, proud chauffeur. Time makes them realize they have more in common than they ever believed was possible, and more than the time and circumstances of their lives would ever allow them to admit. Joining me today on Arts Weekly are actress Kate Black, who is playing Daisy, and director Tom Hoffrichter. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Well, you know, it's, uh, Tom, let's kind of start with what this show is about. I think a lot of people are familiar, you know, with the film version mm -hmm. a long time ago, but let's get, let's talk about this the plot. Well, uh, like you said, uh, the film version is what most people know. It, uh, it's 25 years and it has never really dropped out of the public consciousness. Right. The, the film was very popular, won Academy Awards. The play has been, I would wager that it's one of the top five produced community wow. theater plays in the country. Wow. It's always on. And that's because the story is, um, uh, I mean, you did the recap, basically. Daisy um, is of an age where she's having trouble driving. And so her son hires her a chauffeur. It's the three characters. Yeah. And she really doesn't want the guy. And little by little, he works his way into her family. And the play spans 25 years. Starting in, what, 1947, 1947. right? So that's still kind of an era where some people really did have chauffeurs, and but you, but also women were driving, so. But it's also pre-civil rights. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are living in a, in a world that's pre-Brown v. Board of Education. Mm -hmm. um, it's pre the Voting Rights Act. We're, we're still talking about a whole um, segment of the society that don't have the rights that the others have right. and while Daisy considers herself an enlightened person <laughs> some things lurk as right. things lurk in us all right well and this is a small cast mm -hmm. you know this mm -hmm. is so it, it's different from the movie and that you don't meet extended family members it's just three tell me about the who's in the cast and the characters um, well obviously Kate's Daisy and uh, um, uh, uh, Everett Collier who showed up out of the blue. He's a gentleman from uh, Bluffton, Ohio, okay. is playing Hoke, and Scott Rummage is playing Bully, Kate's son. Okay. And uh, Scott's done a lot of shows for oh, us. Oh yeah, I've seen him, and, and he's great. Now, so, uh, Kate, tell me about Daisy. I mean, the, the character is wonderful. Is she someone that you had always wanted to play? She is a wonderful character. I, I really hadn't dreamt of playing her at, at this point stage of my life but it's a it's been a wonderful journey and I'm very delighted to be doing it well it, certainly you are not nearly the age that Daisy is even at the beginning of the show That's so true. you know what does that aging process you know do as an actress well for you I've played uh, age a couple of times mm -hmm. before um, one of the early shows that I did with Tom was uh, Three Tall Women by oh. Edward Albee, mm -hmm. and I played a 92-year-old woman wow. yeah, in so that. Daisy's a spring chicken yeah, yeah. That's compared right. to her. <laughs> <It's> a teenager. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, the, uh, Tom knew, I guess, <laughs> already that I was I was going to be able to, to pull the old age off, yeah. and so the, the really big challenge for me, and the, it's part of the real delight, is the opportunity to, to meet her at a time where she's, you know, losing a little bit of her faculties in terms of not being able to drive, but she's real feisty. Right. And that's, she's got this wonderful edge and a sassy little sense of humor. <laughs> and she's, so she's got this great, great quality to her. And, and that quality kind of hangs in mm -hmm. right the way down the road, you know, yeah. all 25 years. So, um, it's it's a wonderful challenge for me to find that through line that that feistiness mm -hmm. that intellect that um, th that humanity I mean she, you know there are she is is a, a woman who who has grown up through all of uh, the the prejudices of the South right. and those are ingrained in her in many ways but she she strives to to not be that person, you know, she is always looking for the humanity in in any given situation. Well, and I think it's important too. They're a Jewish family, mm -hmm. so exactly. the prejudice against Hoke and the African American folks, she knows firsthand. But 
she doesn't quite uh, understand um, that, that there is a connection between that or doesn't want to admit. Uh, the other thing about age before we leave that yeah. is one of the reasons um, most of the time Daisy is played by a younger woman, it's a 90 minute play straight through. Wow. And honestly, just changing clothes without even doing the acting, mm -hmm. you gotta be in pretty good shape to just change <laughs> the clothes. So, it's a challenge. Um, it so is. it's not unusual for somebody who is considerably younger to take on this role. See. So you've got to express that physical change in age just through your body and facial expression. There's no time to change makeup or wigs the, or that sort of thing. Whatever the makeup is at the beginning of the play <laughs> is pretty much what it is at the end. Yeah. So, so it's uh, what the other thing that I'm so delighted about is the opportunity to work with my voice, to work with my body, mm -hmm. to change my face, facial gestures and so on and make that be the the aging process right. you know and so it the audience gets to watch it because it sounds like her personality is still quite vibrant throughout mm -hmm. even as the body well, changes and we also have to be careful because there are some women at first presbyterian church who are well up into their 80s oh. who would not want to be considered old and doddering <laughs> that's exactly and right. who are not old that's and doddering right. so yeah, there's exactly. an energy level to daisy mm -hmm. that, that goes all the way until she's into her early 90s right. you know. well and how does daisy um, interact with the other characters because this play I think a lot of people think oh it's driving Miss Daisy it's all about Miss Daisy but we've got two other characters <laughs> tell me about that the, the dynamic amongst the characters is what makes the play mm -hmm. I mean uh, you know that's the real joy right. of it and uh, uh, of course there's uh, when I first meet Hoke my driver that's there's a lot of dramatic tension there because I don't, I don't want to be driven right you know I want to do for myself I want to take the trolley if I have to, or walk. You know, I, if I can't drive, by golly, <laughs> you know. And so, there's a, there's a lot of dramatic tension that goes on around that, and uh, and he has to really work hard to win me over. So. Well, and then your son. Mm -hmm. Bully is also a big part of this dynamic right. because and he's worried about me, yeah. and he's he doesn't. You know, he wants me to be able to be out in the world and have a life, but he doesn't doesn't want me to be driving, and the insurance company won't let me drive. So, <laughs> he's he's putting his foot down, and I don't like it a bit. No, <laughs> don't like it at all. <laughs> and I haven't really thought about this, but I did this play about 12, 13 years ago, and it was before in 2006 I lost my mother and went through a lot of the things that Bully goes through mm -hmm. in terms of trying trying to take care of an aging parent. Right. And uh, I think I'm better equipped to direct this play now than I was 12, 13 yeah. years ago. Well, because you've actually gone yeah. through that real experience and yeah. you know what it's like to try to take yeah. the keys away or mm -hmm. yeah. change their living mm -hmm. arrangements or something mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, Kate, you just came off a huge, you know, ensemble in our town, which mm -hmm. was absolutely wonderful. So now you're in this very small cast, you know. What what are the differences or what's special about being in a oh, very small ensemble it's cast? It's dramatically different. Mm -hmm. um, it's it was so wonderful to work in that big group with that that tremendous energy that was happening with amongst everyone there right. was it was such an ensemble and and there were, but you know this this has a great deal of energy also it's just a smaller ensemble and every every piece of it has to you know weave in and out of itself with the the sh shifts of the the set and the the costume changes and all of those things, it, it has to weave in and out just the same way a large one does. It's just the smaller, smaller and, <laughs> and tighter uh, and, and, you know, shorter, shorter duration, no break. So. Well, you know, you mentioned the set. You know, Tom, tell me about the set because, I mean, I'm imagining are we in a, in a car, in a real car? You know, tell me about no, how this set works. We're in a, we are in a number of places. It, uh, it takes place in Daisy's a, a living room in her home. We're in Bully's office for a while. We are in the car for a while. Mm -hmm. We're at a cemetery for a while. So it's one of those unit sets where you try to create an atmosphere. And when uh, Bob Sutton and I, um, Bob, who's our tech director and uh, helps uh, usually the two of us kind of collaborate to design the set, um, we were like, what should the colors be? And we started looking at Georgia clay and Georgia peaches and um, it's so hard to describe how a set takes pl mm -hmm. takes shape because there are so many conversations and all of a sudden you look up and you see it 
kind of working, and you're not sure how it got there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but that is that is kind of, and even now at this point, we're still a little bit out from uh, performing, and the actual, the, the color of the car, we're like looking at going, that looks like it doesn't quite fit. So I would have a feeling that by the time we get to opening, there will still be some changes that will will make it work. But that's that's what theater is about. Mm -hmm. right. Well, um, it's always fascinating to see how the different set works with the different stage annual. That's one of my favorite parts about going to a show and seeing, oh, what's going to happen here? Is it mm -hmm. small? Yeah. Is it big? And, and how does the space transform? Well, and the space at First Pres is a unique space as well. It's a small space compared to some of the theaters mm -hmm. we have in town. Mm -hmm. So it's it's going to be unique to, to fit those sets. It's my favorite space is it? to work in, in town. Is it? Why Absolutely is, why my is favorite that? space. It is in terms of the the structure of it, it's warm, it's intimate, it it gives you a sense of a real theater in just the most wonderful, warm and intimate sense. I, 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 there's no space I like working in. Well, it's more wonderful than to see class. a show mm -hmm. there too. The, there's really no bad seat. Everything's mm -hmm. really very, very yeah, close. But, uh, and it is. It's a 300 seat theater, but you're right. You feel as though you are right on top of the mm -hmm. action, but at the same time. Right. It gives you the best of both worlds. Yeah, I it think. really does. So, it really does. Yeah. Well, you know, is so many people will remember this story as a as a film, you know, first. But do you think that the the play is an effective adaptation? I mean, the film came first, right? right. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, it did. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, the, great. It was a. Uh, I think it won the Pulitzer Prize, and I think it won the Tony that year. Okay. Um, but um, da, na, 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 na. I'm sorry, I'm humming the music in my head yeah. <laughs> from the driving music. But it was kind of a surprise to me. Very few plays, if you if you really go back and look, very few plays transform into good movies. Right. Primarily because in the theater you hear the story, right. you hear a play, and you see a movie. Right. But because it was a, a unit set and you get all these looks, they could take you to all these interesting places. Right number one, so that kind of helped the play. But number two, um, the, there's something eternal about these characters right. that that no matter what medium you're dealing with, they strike a chord. And, uh, and Jessica Tandy and Morgan Freeman yeah. were Tremendous. amazing. And yeah. when do you open? Uh, we have a preview on Thursday, January 9th. Correct. Um, which uh, we always... Invite okay. everybody in. Great. And information's uh, and on the screen about yep. where to and get you can tickets. Buy tickets for the preview there, or uh, the twenty, uh, the t then January tenth through the twenty fifth, Fridays and Saturdays at seven thirty. One Sunday matinee, the nineteenth. Great. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank I'm you. Melinda Haynes of the IPFW College of Visual and Performing Arts. Don't miss the next Arts Weekly when we'll meet local high school theater directors Sue Nelson, Vicki Maluli, Steve Pearson, and Tim Miller to hear what's on tap for the spring drama productions at Leo, Homestead, Carroll, and Northrop High Schools. For up-to-the-minute arts updates, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Be sure to join us here live Thursday evenings at 7.30 on PBS 39. Thank you for watching Arts Weekly.